Okay, we're back, wrapping up Strata Conference. This is the last segment of three great days from Silicon Angles, the Cube, our flagship telecast where we go out to the events and talk to the smartest people, extract the signal from the noise, break down the event, talk to everybody, get a sense for the show, and we've done that, and uh, now it's time to wrap it up. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com, and I'm joined with Dave Vellante, co-host of the Cube from Wikibon.org, premier research in big data, with Jeff Kelly, the lead analyst in the big data sector who put out the first report on market size and uh, vendor rep leaderboard by revenue. Um, guys, uh, welcome to the final wrap up. We've had a good day today. Uh, Tim O'Reilly did a flyby, great session there. Um, tons of CEOs, CTOs, tech geeks, data scientists, practitioners. Um, Dave, what do you think? So John, I think there are five themes that I you know, would take away from, from this year. Obviously a lot of great developments from, from last year, but number one is this whole concept that we've been talking about a platform maturity. And my, my takeaway of this conference is the platform is still not mature. Um, it's just finally last year we saw some competition to Cloudera with Hortonworks and, and MapR coming to market. Uh, you're seeing uh, HPCC, Lexus, Nexus now starting to really get to market. So there's a lot of work still has to be done on the platform, but I think it's going to happen and I think it's going to happen fast. I think the second thing, John and, and Jeff, is the skill shortage. It's coming through loud and clear. A lot of people predicted it. Uh, there's a great opportunity for anybody who's a, a database administrator, a storage administrator, a statistician, a math geek, a BI professional. There's so many opportunities in this space, and my advice is jump in right now. The third thing is machine learning. I mean, that is a huge theme that, you know, machines actually helping us get to the place sooner where we can begin to apply algorithms and extract that valuable data. Um, and I, we talked about application innovation. Again, I think it's the early days of app innovation. Really, some interesting startups, but I mean, this is, you know, inning one, and, uh, and, and a, again, yeah. a long way to go. And then the, f the final one is, is, I think, the big one. It's affirmation, the intersection of enterprise technology and Hadoop, and that's happening in a big way as we predicted. Yeah. I, I agree, Dave. I would, I would add that my summary and, and takeaway that I want to extract and share is that big data has evolved just in the past year and two years since we were at Hadoop World, one year since the inaugural Strata, is that the size and the range of the opportunity is much bigger than I even anticipated. And I like to think big on, on these things. And I'm just seeing a massive, uh, massive swath of fertile ground for startups. Uh, and the examples are endless. Just uh, uh, Cloudera and Hortonworks. Uh, a little skirmish, are they going to compete? No, it's just so much room to coexist. The innovation on the open source, they're all contributing, massive. The business intelligence data warehousing business is not a do-over, it's a retooling. Some old stuff's going to get thrown away, as Bill Schmarzo said, but still some integration issues. I think the impact to society and the role of data is going to create a massive in industry. And I think this year we're going to see the emergence of the explosion of applications from, I don't want to say mom and pop applications, but like little applications that make a big significant difference. Data ISVs we've talked about, mm -hmm. the emergence of data as a service, venture backed companies um, picking out the best talent, PhDs and or developers within these open source communities that are flourishing. is going to create a massive tsunami of wealth creation uh, for entrepreneurs, for businesses, and for the companies that adopt big data and, and truly culturally integrate big data into their culture. So Strata essentially covered all that in a range of topics, from educating people through an MBA of data science to geek talks on deep data dives to society changing uh, paradigms. So to me, I think that range is the astounding aha moment. And again, we heard from Couchbase talking about you know, their strategies, performance, fault tolerance, high availability. They'll build on that with mobile and analytics. Mongo had some great examples we heard, um, Cassandra having in some nice rooms. So the coexistence is a big theme that I'm going to add to our editorial calendar because I truly believe that this is a whole new industry being constructed. The people here at Strata are the players that are building the industry, and I think that it's going to be a very exciting time. Obviously, the VCs are, are, are investing like crazy. We saw, uh, I mean, we saw, we saw Mike Dauber came on because he, he happened to be from, from Battery hanging around, but all the VCs, Dave, I talked to were actually too busy in meetings to come on the Cube and promote themselves. So to me, in the venture community, that means there's some serious stuff going down. They just don't have the time to even do promotion via the Cube. They're out doing deals and, and trying to get those big deals. So very exciting time. 
Uh, again, also pleased, Jeff, to hear from you about mm -hmm. your reaction to the big data study and your observations and talking to the, sure. the folks here on the floor. Well, I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, uh, I think actually w one of the points we made in the study, uh, which we really was reaffirmed here this week, was that uh, you know the innovation is really coming in this market from all the startups we're seeing, all the small independent pure plays. Um, you know, the big guys are here. If you go out into the into the exhibition hall, you'll see all the big guys. You'll see Microsoft and you'll see EMC and and others. But the the, the players that are really doing the innovation, that are really creating or starting to create the the next generation of applications, it's going to take advantage of this uh, underlying big data. Data, uh, platform, which I'm a little, I think it's a little closer to maturity than I think uh, you think. But the platform side. Yeah. Um, th you just look at all the guests we had on today that are doing some re really interesting stuff from Tristata to Lucid Imagination, Couchbase, uh, Data Stacks. I mean, there's just so many small but exciting startups out there right now, and uh, I couldn't agree more. I mean, there, there's there's so many opportunities, and I think there's there's really no cap on it right now. I mean, um, democratizing the ability to to work with data um, is is exactly what we're seeing here, and it's just opening up so many opportunities for for entrepreneurs. Dave, what's your take on the um, the strata? I know I want to kind of go a little bit. Deeper. I think that's a good summary, uh, and we'll follow up with more content on wikibon.org with all the videos and obviously siliconangle.tv. But I want to kind of shift it into uh, what we've been covering in the storage, cloud, and in the big data area where there is this discussion going on with VMware, Pure Storage was on, the role of Flash, virtualization. All those are playing a role, and David Floyer was talking earlier about some of the things he's seeing around the changes in these systems architectures. What's your view on that and relative to the big vendors who actually have the big big deep pockets, IBM, yeah, EMC, Microsoft, HP, Oracle. Um, what's your angle on that? Well, you know, it's interesting to listen to Tim O'Reilly basically saying, you know, uh, uh, create more value than you capture. And I think that um, most of the industry thinks differently. So mm -hmm. um, the, the big guns, the big executives at all the large companies aren't here. The people that we usually see when we go to conferences, all the analysts and the journalists, they're not here. We're here because we're out trying to create more value than we capture because we understand, as Tim said, that you know, there's, a, there's a means to that end. And I think that um, I'm astounded, John. Um, remember when I, when I went to Hadoop World two years ago, I was astounded that there was absolutely nobody from the storage and cloud and virtualization world there. Um, and still, there's a paucity of people at, at this conference. And yet, this is where all the action is. It's where all the development is happening. It's going to, you know, <laughs> billions of dollars are going to be made on this topic, and um, the energy is right, and it's it's you know it's it's not a fad. It's not like green IT is. Uh, <laughs> you know, our guest this morning was talking about everybody was putting in their business plans green IT, and now it's big data. This is real. Could couldn't agree more. I mean, we're we're just seeing uh, so many opportunities, and you know, in terms of again talking about the platform, uh, you know, I think um, one reason I think it's probably a little a little bit more mature, or perhaps a little bit more ready for for the enterprise, uh, is due to the cloud model. If you've got companies that are providing services based on Hadoop in the cloud, kind of abstracting away the complexity, uh, who can focus on, uh, who, who have the skills to work with Hadoop and some of these other uh, com competing platforms, um, that's, a, that's a way that we're going to see uh, big data applications kind of make their way a little just, faster than others might. You know, I think that, that think. you know, the, all the enterprise guys are coming and saying that Hadoop is not enterprise ready, we're going to make it enterprise ready. And my, the, the reason why I think it's, it's, it's somewhat immature is because I don't think that's the right model. I think the, the ecosystem has to build up. You know, the HDFS and Hadoop, it's a whole new concept to, to storing information and, and distributing data, and they've got to figure out the security model and the recoverability model and all mm -hmm. that stuff. I don't think the answer is to just plug in a bunch of monolithic you know, architectures, for instance, and solve that problem. So Map, you know, MapReduce Next Gen is coming out, and I, I, I still think there's a little bit more work there. I think it's going to happen fast, and I think very quickly we're going to move beyond to what you know, Andreas Vigan says uh, infrastructure is irrelevant. I don't think it's irrelevant, but you know, it soon will be. Well, I mean, I think you know some of his conversations actually don't even hold up water anymore because you know he he talked about a lot of things that just didn't play out. I mean, I liked Andreas, but but you know he was just totally off base on the cube last year, Dave. I mean, we're seeing a yeah, he had some wild ideas. That, they're, well, they're all completely obtuse to what's happening right now, and you're seeing the technology obviously open source based. We heard that the bottleneck is not say the network, but it's the spindles. So I think backup's going to change. I think data domain-like companies are going to come out of the woodwork there. But more importantly, with Flash, the system's architecture is the key. And I think 
you know, one of the things that I'm looking at is is that there's so many changes around human capital and the application. So what I think I'm going to start focusing on for the next year uh, is to continue to look at um, what I would call legacy big data thinkers and implementers, and that is, you know. Big data really hasn't been, has, has, is not new, right? So you talk to anyone in the financial business, they've been doing big data for a long time. You go to New York and talk to anyone on Wall Street, like big data, what are you kidding me? We've been doing this for years. So I think what you're going to see is you're going to see an injection of paradigms and best practices from different industries into this tech scene. And this is what Tim O'Reilly was kind of tip, tipping uh, his hand to, which is, you know, Google, Facebook, Twitter, Zynga, these are the new players that have platforms. And so I think the business applications, whether it's oil and gas, to financial, to healthcare, to government and society, is going to be very, very focused on that delivery of a value on the application side. So I'm excited by that, and I think it opens up a whole new set of uh, conversations that we could track and monitor and be part of. So I well, think that's super exciting. I just want to thank you, John Furrier, for bringing big data into my <laughs> life. And, uh, and it was a great call. And we're having so much fun here on theCUBE, working with your team at SiliconANGLE and the team at Wikibon and Jeff Kelly. Uh, you know, you did a great job with that report. I mean, it's exploding, right? Everybody's talking about it. VCs want to talk to you. Uh, you know, companies want to talk to you. People want to dissect well, the Dave, numbers. Well, Dave, Dave, well, people are like don't understand, and we'll, we'll, we're going to tip our hand a little bit further here, is that SiliconANGLE has predictive analytics, and we use those predictive analytics to uh, shape our editorial, and it's, it's, uh, it's not a lucky strike that we're always right in terms of the areas that we're covering. And, uh, you know, I think SiliconANGLE with, with storage, store, our storage angle, our cloud and mobile and social has been great. Got great content there. Servicesangle.com. People looked at that site last year like, what? I'm telling you, that is going to be an explosive market. It's going to be great because there's so much dollars involved. There's going to be some real action going on. We heard from the guy who used to work at Accenture saying, man, the disruption in services is going to be massive. Okay. The other area is DevOps angle. We launched DevOps angle. I'm predicting here that DevOps angle will be as big as services angle and big, big data in terms of uh, attention in about a year and a half, two years, that vertical is going to be exposed. So we're getting out early on DevOps angle. And you know what, we're going to have more, more coverage areas as we hone our analytics and big data strategy. Uh, we're going to have more. So that's the deal. And I just want to thank you for being a great co-host. Jeff Kelly for a great report. Of course, Kian on the, on the, on the board has been doing great. Kian, Tran, great job. Mark Hopkins uh, running the social and making things work. Dressed up every day with the tie. It's looking good. He's looking like a pro out there. And Alex Williams, who's here on the ground, getting the stories, talking to, to companies. And so the team of people that make it happen are really the ones. And uh, Justin TV and all the listeners out there and, and, I mean, viewers, thank you for watching. So I really want to just say thanks to everybody.